Some reptiles, in my opinion, are a bit overrated. This is a bit of a controversial subject, so if you're the type that likes to write comments in the comment section below, crack your knuckles, open your favorite energy drink, yell upstairs to mom, you're going to be late for dinner, and let's get cracking. Top 5 Overrated Reptiles. I'm Adam. This is Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. I don't think any reptile is a bad reptile or a boring reptile. By overrated, I mean ones that present a lot more problems than people will let you know about. Ones that are really popular but probably aren't the greatest pet reptiles for maybe anybody, but definitely not for, for beginners where all of these at one point in time or another were beginner reptiles. So let's just jump into it so you can see what I mean. Number five is corn snakes. Yes, corn snakes. I know I put these in my top five best beginner reptile videos all the time. Is a corn snake better than this snake or this snake? Here's why I think they're overrated. I've never had luck with them. And every animal has a personality. And a lot of people think that when you get a corn snake, it's automatically going to be a gem of an animal. They're easy to tame. You're going to have no problems whatsoever. I've had three different corn snakes. I've never had one that was handleable without being struck at or bitten every time. And then even the ones that I tamed down, eventually tamed down, Within two days or three days, if you didn't handle them, they just became their old self again. So it was a lot of work for an animal that really wasn't that handleable after all. Now, I know a lot of you are scratching your head like, this guy is kind of dumb. Uh, I've had corn snakes my entire life and never once been bit. That's true. But in my experience, there's a lot more uh, corn snakes that have a hissy or a bratty type of personality than YouTube or care sheets would let you lead on. So in my opinion, Corn snakes are a bit overrated. That's coming in at number five. Number four most overrated reptile, in my opinion, is sand boas. <laughs> and here's why. Sand boas are very cool. They're awesome to look at. And I love sand boas. I love looking at them. They come in a bunch of different morphs. But at the end of the day, if you want an animal that you can look at, that is on display and is going to be interactive, you might as well get a sandbox to look at. It's like having a pet sandbox. It really is. You're never going to see them um, or very rarely. They just kind of stay hidden all the time. Even if you take them out, a lot of the times they can have bratty personalities as well and they're unpredictable the way that they strike at you. They're not big enough that they're ever going to hurt you, uh, but it is kind of an issue. And I just think that they're not the best for beginners and they do get a lot of accolades as super easy to have because they're small or uh, they're, you know, they're great reptiles for everybody and people are talking them up and they are great reptiles. I've worked with them before. I just don't think, I think they're a little bit overrated. Um, you know, if, especially if you're someone who wants to enjoy your reptiles for just the sake of looking at them or handling them even, this is maybe not the right one for you. So in my opinion, overrated reptile number four is sand boas. Just to use an example, um, when I walk into my office room here, the office, the room that is next to my reptile room, I've got uh, my anaconda morph hognose snake in here and he always kind of comes up to the glass or at least pokes his head up to acknowledge that I'm there. It's like the coolest thing. It's a diurnal type of snake and I think that that's really cool to have and that's something that I want around my desk. But I've never seen a sand boa do this. Um, when you walk into your room and see your sand boa enclosure, it looks like a sandbox. Number three, most overrated reptile in my opinion are bearded dragons. Now, whoa, 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 don't get me wrong. I love bearded dragons. My first two reptiles I ever got were both bearded dragons. But I think that they are not a good beginner lizard, first of all. And second of all, they're not as easy to take care of as everyone thinks. First of all, you need UVB light, a very strong UVB light. You need a high heat basking spot as well. And you need to be very dry. And if you're going to use a substrate, you're going to have to use something that doesn't hold a bunch of humidity, but still looks nice if you want an animal to look at. In my opinion, these are not the best pet reptiles. They're not bad pet reptiles at all, in my opinion. But they're not as easy as a lot of people say. They do take up a little bit of space, right? Not a ton of space, but I would say a 75 gallon is what would I, I would recommend for an adult uh, bearded dragon. So it does take up a fair bit of space. You're going to need to have lights from the top. Uh, it's going to create a bunch of heat in your home as well. So I know that this is basic reptile stuff. A lot of reptiles fit in this category, 
but not every reptile is toted as the number one best reptile. If you think about getting into reptiles, get this one. I think that's wrong. Bearded dragons are more of an intermediate species than a beginner species in my opinion. And not only that, they poop so much, so much. They eat so many vegetables, they poop a lot, they're super messy, they smell like heck. They are brutally smelly and that is why I've never really got another one. Another thing too is you either have to feed them dubia roaches or crickets. A lot of people who are knowledgeable about bearded dragons don't want you feeding them something with a really hard exterior shell like a superworm or a mealworm and I kind of agree with this because they don't process them as well as crickets. So you're going to need something that is live that you can't just stick in the fridge like crickets or dubia roaches. These sometimes get out in your house. It's not as easy as keeping a leopard gecko, that's for darn sure. So for all of those reasons, I'm gonna give number three to the bearded dragon. Now number two, a lot of people are gonna have as number one, and that is iguanas. The number two most overrated reptile is iguanas, and here's why. They're big, they can be mean. Uh, if they are mean, it's gonna hurt. They've got big claws, they got nasty bites, they need a ton of space, they need uh, high UVB light, which is gonna be hard to facilitate in such a giant enclosure like you're gonna need. It's probably gonna be need to be custom built. They take a lot of money to take care of. All in all, these are not a great reptile that would be, in my opinion, what reptiles are, which are kind of a lower maintenance pet. A lot of them anyway, not all of them. And some people want something that they need to spend a ton of time on and that's their main thing, right? But for me, I don't really want that. I like the fact that with bearded, or with leopard geckos rather, I can leave my house for two days and as long as everything's on timers and they have water there and I fed them, they're good to go. You can't do that with a dog and in my opinion, iguanas are under the picture on that one too. So they're a little bit more maintenance, but the one thing is that tail is gonna hurt you, the claws can hurt you, the bite can hurt you. These guys are dangerous, not to your life, uh, but in terms of if you wanna go get stitches or you want a bruise or a scratch, these guys might deliver it and they're very unpredictable. They go through a phase where they might be puppy dog tame here and then in a couple months, they are not. They are like Godzilla type monsters. Not that they're monsters, I shouldn't say it like that. No reptile just comes out of the box as a monster. But I think that these guys are super overrated for that reason because they used to be in every pet store. I used to see them in every pet store when I was a kid. And they're like 30 bucks or 40 bucks, which is dirt cheap. So I think that this is kind of mis misguided and misleading to people who walk into a store and think, well, I want a reptile. I'll get this one. Look how cute it is. They grow big. They grow fast. This is not a great reptile for anyone who doesn't really know exactly what they're doing and know what they're getting themselves into. And the reason that they're not number one is because they're not as popular as they used to be. And we have the internet now so people can really easily know this information. So number two is iguanas. All right, number one overrated reptile of all time, in my opinion, chameleons. And here's why. Chameleons are touted as being easy to care for. When I was a kid, we almost got a chameleon. Uh, it would have been our first reptile. We never had one when I was a kid because the guy at the pet store said they were easy to keep because they were small. True, they don't get big. They don't get as big as a iguana, for example. They're not easy to keep. First of all, they need UVB light, right? Which is a uh, sticking point with me for anyone who wants to get something that uh, doesn't need to be changed all the time and needs a little bit more um, information and more research in my opinion than say a leopard gecko which doesn't need UVB. Also, they're gonna need a screen enclosure which not everybody can facilitate and which means that the temperature and humidity in your home or the room is gonna be, you know, it's a little bit harder to keep a whole room at a temperature or humidity even in that space where that chameleon is so in my opinion, that makes it harder. And then they don't drink from standing water. You need a dripper system. You need to feed them off of tongs a lot of the time as well. So all in all, it's just really difficult to keep them in my opinion and compared to other reptiles. And they're not long lived. So a lot of these guys are expensive. Like if you want a panther chameleon in my area, sometimes it's like 500 bucks. And this thing is gonna be dead in five years if you take care of it. A lot of the time, a lot of uh, chameleons, three to five years is pretty normal. Some up to seven, some up to 10. It depends on the species. I'm not an expert on chameleons, as you can tell. But anyone I know who's had a chameleon has visited the vet several times and put tons of money into it. So this is kind of like a money pit of an animal. And for some people, that's what they want. I think chameleons are beautiful. And if you can take care of them, if you want to dedicate a giant portion of your time, they're great. But they're not like 
on, well, we've got a telephone company here in Canada called Telus, and they use animals. And the big one they use for their promotions is a chameleon, and it changes to like a bright red or like a bright, it, that's not the case. You're, a lot of the times these animals are like, oh, they're super small, and they change bright red and bright green on a whim. That's not how these things work at all. They're very misunderstood in my opinion. Oh yeah, and even if you can take care of them, a lot of the times taming them down is a little bit of a challenge. So for sure, this is a an advanced reptile in my opinion. I think that these guys are super overrated in that sense. Not that they're bad animals, they are beautiful and a lot of people have really great success with them. But number one is chameleons. So that's it. That's this week's episode. Thanks for coming back. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.